you but when I walked in here I felt the presence of God Lift your hands to him. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. I want you to open your mouth and bless the Lord in one minute. Open your mouth. No distractions. Eyes closed. Focus on Jesus. Open your mouth and magnify the Lord in this place. Sons and daughters of God, lift your voice and bless Him. Just for a moment, quit looking around. Forget about who is around you. Sons and daughters of the living God, lift your hands, lift your voice and bless his name. Call him all the names that you call him in your secret. Adore and magnify him like you do in your private time of prayer and worship. Pneumatic, raise your voice and give him glory. Raise your voice and give him praise. Raise your voice and adore him. Thou at your feet, O oh Lord, is the most high place in your prayer. Presence, Lord, we seek your face, we seek your face. I'll take it again. Thou at your feet, O oh Lord, is the most high. In your presence, Lord, we've come to seek your face. We seek your face, for there is no higher calling, no greater. And kneel before your throne Truly we are amazed 
at your glory and praise by your mercies, O oh Lord. We live to worship, sing there is no And kneel before your throne. We're amazed, we're amazed at your glory, truly embraced by your mercies. Oh, we need to us. than to bow before the King of Kings and kneel before you. This is the best place to be. I'm amazed by your glory and praise by your mercies, O oh Lord. I need to worship Forget about what is around you and worship Him. That's why you came. Yeah. Yeah. I 
like the three wise men who saw the star from afar and went on a journey of spiritual pilgrimage to where the young child was and they worshipped. We've come, we lay aside our crowns, we lay aside our titles, we lay aside our achievements, we put away every distraction and we freely worship you from our hearts. And we ask that tonight you will be magnified in our midst. That your word will come forth with light, with power, with hope. Reassuring every heart that is broken. Bringing healing to those who are afflicted. And bringing your children to a place of rest and refreshing. And may your name be glorified. Thank you, precious Jesus. In Jesus' name. While you're standing, if you're sick, I want you to put your hand where the sickness is. I feel the healing anointing and I want to rebuke affliction. If you have any kind of sickness, any affliction, I want you to just put your hand where the pain is. Or where the affliction is if you are following online you do so and just release your faith with us there is an anointing for healing tonight not just physical healing alone but even emotional healing father i take authority against the spirit of affliction and infirmity against the spirit of disease i rebuke you right now in the name of jesus I prophesy peace to the bodies of God's people here. I declare that the Lord heals you and makes you whole. Be healed in your body. Be healed in your mind. Be healed in your emotions. Be healed in your blood and water streams. Be healed in your bones, your tissues, your organs. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, we declare you healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Let the pains go away right now. And let peace be restored to your soul and to your body. In Jesus' mighty name. Shout a big amen for that. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in God's presence today? Please clap your hands. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Just welcome the person by your left and right to Pneumatic and be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I have two messages to preach, uh, but they are going to be very brief. The first one is a prophetic warning that God is bringing specifically to the church in Borno State. And that's what I will do justice to first in the next five to ten minutes. 
and then we are going to rise and pray we are going to pray a prayer for mercy amen a very serious prayer for intercession the bible says in isaiah 62 verse 6 he said i have set watchmen upon your walls O jerusalem that they will never hold their peace day or night in ezekiel chapter 3 god told ezekiel he said i've sent you as a watchman to watch and if there is danger that you warn the people otherwise if you don't warn them and disaster hits them he said i'll require the blood on your head and i believe that as a house god has planted us in this territory partly as watchers and as watchmen to interpret and bring to the knowledge of the people within this geographical space the counsel of the lord part time how many of you believe that how many of you believe that god speaks from this place one of the ways to know if god is speaking through an individual or through a church or through a spiritual community is their love for the word of god all right so god gave me this word and i want to share it with us and we are going to stand and intercede for this land and after that we'll go into the message for the day so in case you are following online and you, you are within the jurisdiction of Borno state this word is applying to you and i want us to join i want you to join us in prayer as we raise this supplication for the mercy of god amen can i have my phone please on wednesday morning while i was praying early hours of that day the lord spoke to me and gave me a word i was praying for something else and then god spoke to me and you know sometimes when you are in the place of prayer you have to understand that the primary reason for prayer is fellowship and communication between two people it's not only you that has things to tell god god has things to tell people but no one is listening that's the reason why most people's prayer life most believers experience dryness or they don't experience a steady growth in their prayer life that's because they are isolating the primary reason of prayer which is communication the reason why god created prayer is so that he can share with man and sometimes you have to keep your needs aside and glue your ears to his heart to know what he is saying and you know most times when you go to pray about things before god you will realize that god is talking to you about himself and his desires but if you go to god about his own desires he will bring things your way is that true or am i talking to myself some experienced christians will understand what i'm talking about you can be praying about your exam that you have just failed and god will be telling you about his plan for another nation and the place of intercession and god has already he fixed it in his word he said that if we seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness then things will come so the secret to enjoying a consistent and unbroken life of fellowship with god is in as much as you must take advantage of the place of supplication in prayer to present your need you must understand that your relationship with god is bigger than those needs because those needs came in time and you are relating with a god that exists in eternity so you need to step out of your needs step out of your comfort zone sometimes you will go praying with a sick body just like somebody may be seated now with a headache i salute you for coming but if you can just take your consciousness of that headache and listen tonight you will realize that in the world that is coming tonight your healing was planned before you came as a matter of fact before you stand up again you would have been completely healed so that is how to do business with god in the place of prayer and while i was talking to god about some things god began to pour his heart towards me and i had to sit down and listen and the lord said this and i say it respectfully speaking i submit this revelation to be scrutinized and to be judged the bible says we should judge prophecy isn't it so you are free to scrutinize and judge it and if you feel it is not side by side with the word of god it is okay for you to reject it but i cannot but speak the things that i have seen and heard 
No, that's what Peter told the Pharisees. God said that the church in Meduguri has failed in primarily four aspects. And I'm going to list them down to you. Four basic aspects that the church in this city, in this land, has failed. And it therefore means that these are areas that we need to repent and readjust. The word repent in the Greek means to turn a new leaf or to have a change of mindset. So, if God is saying we should repent, it means that we need to adjust our understanding about these things. We need to seek God's own understanding. And you know, God doesn't have to be dramatic to communicate his counsel. He is God. He is king of kings. Is that true? So most times because there, there, we, our generation is becoming too used to drama in the name of the prophetic, we take casually heavy counsels, heavy matters that are in the heart of God communicated to his people. So please don't mind the way I speak. I want you to receive it as the word of God. By the grace of God, aside from preaching the gospel, I have served faithfully before God as an intercessor for this land since 2014. Next year makes it 10 years. So I think I can tell you a thing or two. Is that true? Well, I'll leave you. I won't say that. I won't say that. So these are the four things that the Lord said the church has failed and we need to go back to repent and readjust. Saying that we have failed doesn't mean we are not born again any longer. Saying that we have failed doesn't mean we are now completely sinners. No, no. We should be ready once and again for healthy criticisms from the Spirit of God to His church. In Revelations, you say, Let him that hath an ear hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He wrote to the seven churches and he, he acknowledged areas where they had done well, but he also pointed out areas where they have failed. Number one, God said we have failed in the area of corporate prayers and territorial intercession. Corporate prayers and territorial intercession. Intercession that is galvanized around God's purpose, God's heartbeat for a territory. I hope you know that intercession is an aspect of prayer, though it goes beyond prayer. But in the context of prayer, intercession is the aspect of prayer that has to do with the mediation between God and men. And I was preaching somewhere this morning and I told them that the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2 verse 5, that there is one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus, between the spirit and human beings. I, I, I would have thought that the person who should serve in that position of mediating between a spirit and humans should be a spirit. Abi, isn't it better that a lecturer mediates between a lecturer and students? You don't think it's better? Aha. You better believe it's better sometimes. So. At least they know how to speak their language. But the Bible says the man Jesus. And you realize that in heaven, Jesus is the only one carrying flesh. In Luke chapter 24, when Jesus appeared to his disciples, he told them, he said, Handle me and see. A spirit had not flesh and bones. So when Jesus resurrected and ascended to heaven, though in his true essence in the spirit, he was called the life-giving spirit. But as far as his form was concerned, he went to heaven as a man. That was why the marks of the nails were still on his hands, his feet, and the mark of the spear that, that pierced his side was still there. You know why? Because in Romans chapter 8, the Bible says, it is Christ who died, in verse 34, and who was raised and is seated at the hand, right hand of God, making intercession making intercession can i stop to pray i want to speak over you i just saw something now lift your hands everybody in the name of jesus i rebuke the spirit of death 
I just saw something like a shadow entering here and coming upon somebody's head. I rebuke every sentence of death. I declare to you that you shall not die but live to enjoy the goodness of the Lord. To declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every assassination attempt, every plot, every conspiracy, every enchantment, every manipulation, every careful plot by the kingdom of darkness to isolate and destroy anyone or any family, we cancel it by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. It's important we are sensitive like that. I just saw something like a shadow entering the hall. And I know when I see that it's death. You shall not die but live. I'm prophesying to your family again. I, I, I place the seal of the blood over your family. Listen, the blood is God's last card. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Human beings, when you shed blood, they feel it's a sign of weakness. But in the spirit, the Bible says it is true blood that atonement is made. I put a seal of the blood of the Lamb over your life. That next level that God has designed for you, you will step into it without death. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. Let's continue. Please, where was I? So I told them early this morning that I believe that Jesus went to heaven because of Romans 8.34 and Hebrews 7.25. In fact, in Hebrews 7.25, he says he, he lived to make intercession for us. So that every time the devil brings up a case against you, before the council of heaven. Look at it. He always lives to make intercession. Every time the devil brings up a case against you. Jesus presents his body. And God sees the blood. Sees the marks and everything he, he did. And remembered how he suffered on the cross. So that you can escape. That's the reason why certain things have not killed you by now. So you see that intercession goes with a note of sacrifice. And when you talk about sacrifice, it's a word that this Gen, Gen Z, that's what they call us, we don't want to have anything to do with it. It's almost been isolated from Christianity now. And that is why, that is why, if this generation like this should face the great tribulation, very few will be saved. Because there is an aspect of your faith where it is written in scripture, point blank, that you will have to suffer certain things as a mark of approval of your sonship. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 that he, he made the captain of our salvation perfect through his sufferings. So if what authored our salvation was suffering, it means therefore that you cannot and i'm not saying this this is not bad news this is just the news that there is an aspect of your christian experience where you will have to suffer and let me even put it well so that somebody can understand where you have to suffer in silence because when jesus was in the desert he was alone and notice that the bible says it was god who pushed him there the spirit drove him to the wilderness God submitted him to the devil to be tested but the Bible says that after he has tried me I will come forth as gold so the Lord says that we have failed in the place of corporate prayers and intercession that doesn't mean that we don't pray together but corporate prayers is not just coming together to pray we can come together and pray need driven prayers Meanwhile, God's heartbeat for the lost is not attended to. We can come together and pray for, the for, for, for miracles, for this and that. But no one is thinking about the salvation of souls. No one is thinking about the agenda of God's kingdom. No one sees that we are at the mercy. Or God is at the mercy of our deliberate effort 
to advance his cause and his government. In fact, the image of Christ that creation and our society can see is the image that we have presented. So if we have presented a powerless Jesus, it's not because Jesus is powerless. It's because we have presented him that way. And God has kept himself within the jurisdiction of the church. That he cannot express or reveal himself without going through the church. In Revelations chapter 1, remember the revelation of John, the beloved. He said he turned and saw Jesus, like the Son of Man, walking in between the candlesticks. And those candlesticks, those lampstands, we are, having, we are going to do a teaching on that very soon. An epistle to the lampstands. We are going to do a teaching on that very soon. Maybe we'll do it around Utah Flip. After all the power and everything and the celebration, that will be a good message to bring us back. An epistle to the lampstands. We are going to do that teaching. The Bible says Jesus was walking in the midst of the candlesticks. Not before them. Between them. It means that Jesus has limited his revelation and his manifestation. The expression of his person. Which carries the fullness of God. To what the lampstands present. So if the lampstands don't have light on them. It's not because he is not the light of the world. It is what we decide to give. You will now see why prayerless Christianity does not help the kingdom at all. Somebody said a day without prayer is a boast against God. Somebody said prayer is hiding in God. Prayerlessness is hiding from God. What did he say to Adam in Genesis chapter 3? Where art thou? And what did Adam say? I heard your voice and I was afraid and I... That was where prayerlessness started from. Are we together here? I'm speaking, I know that I have the entire society within this land is represented here. And I want us to take this solemnly as a word from God because we are going to stand up in five minutes and cry to God. God needs to show us mercy. You know, when God begins to bring warnings, at that time, everything still looks good and peaceful. So we don't take it serious. That was why Israel and Judah went into captivity. Because when God was crying through his prophet that disaster was coming if they don't repent, it looked like the prophets were lying because that was when they were enjoying prosperity. But you have to be careful with every season of prosperity and abundance because if you don't know how to manage those seasons very well, it leads you into spiritual decline and apostasy. <laughs> Excuse me. Number two. God said we have failed in the place of evangelism. It goes down to our passion for the lost. Passion cannot be hidden. You can say I love you and never prove it. But passion is the very expression of the love of a man. How concerned are we in our everyday lives, in our churches every week, how concerned are we about the salvation of souls? To what extent have we gone to ensure that the harvest of souls are brought into the kingdom? When a man buys a car and he's just him and his wife, will he keep driving that car to church, only the two of them, when that car can carry three more other people? Is the man not thinking that he can get three people who are not born again in those at the seat at the back and then it means three people are saved it's always about what god can do for us it's always about deliverance about prophecy about miracle last week we had the series we, we did the teaching on witchcraft we saw the move of god here that's what we like but when it comes to the lost when it comes to preaching the gospel message to convict the sinners are we truly concerned about it why do I stand here every week? What is my motive for preaching? Is it just to create or to hype a particular image? Am I using ministry as a means to show that I'm successful? Or is my passion to see that men are saved? So if, my, if it is truly my passion and desire to see that men are saved, then I will realize as a preacher, that ministry is not on the pulpit. 
is in the secret. How many of us spend time to pray for churches that experience numerical decline? How many of us spend time to pray for communities within our city where you know that sin and iniquity seems to abound? How many of us can look at a brother in church who is already falling because of one weakness or the other and stand in prayers to see that they are restored? In those days, discipline was in the church. When you misbehave, they discipline you and take you to the back. Even though there was an extreme to that, rather than correcting people, it was humiliating people. But it doesn't take away the place of discipline. Because the Bible says that God chastens those he loves. You see, happy are you when the Lord chastises you. Now there is no place for discipline again. We don't know how to isolate an individual who is already falling away. And do everything possible to ensure that they are reinstated again. Maybe because even we, the pastors, we have, we have dipped our hands into iniquity. God said we have failed in the place of evangelism. God said, number three, we have failed in the place of giving. <laughs> How many of you realize that in the early church, tithe was never mentioned? Raise your hand. Tithe was never mentioned. So, someone who likes to argue scripture, or someone who is not grounded in the faith, can stand up and say, tithe is an Old Testament thing. Tithe has nothing to do with testament. It existed before testaments began. The Bible says that a testament is not in force until the testator died. In the Old Testament, it was the laws that God gave Moses written in that book, sealed with the blood that Moses used. If you read your Bible very well, he had to sprinkle blood on that and it became a covenant. In the New Testament, it was the blood of Jesus. Titan started before both. So it's not a testament thing. It's a kingdom law. You know why you don't see tithe in the New Testament? It was because they didn't tithe in the New Testament. They gave all. You go read your Bible. I promise you by the grace of God, I will never stand here and teach you what is deceptive. No. I may be young, but I, I'm coming from somewhere. They gave all. Acts chapter 2, from verse 44 down. Acts chapter 4, verse 32, 33. The Bible says none lacked because they even went ahead and sold lands and houses. But now a building project is going on in a church and somebody is saving money to buy a car when God does not have house. And I'm not coming here because I'm coming to raise anything. Nothing. I'm not raising anything at all. God said, we have failed. Not you. We, including myself. Do you look at what's happening in Nigeria today? Where will be the relevance of the church if the economy continues like this? You think of it. How much is transportation now? Can people afford even food to eat? Talk more of being transported to church. If the church does not arise now, in this season, we may lose our relevance for a long time. We already have lost it. You know how? Because we're championing and shouting, this person will win, this person will win, and they didn't win. So some of the politicians now feel that, well, <laughs> it's like the soothsayers and the wizards and the necromancers are more accurate than the church. So, we have already lost our relevance. This is an opportunity for us to arise. Someone say, but apostle, I give. This is not an I message. God said, we. We. And you know, you don't measure giving by how much you give. You measure it by how much is left after you give. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, the Bible says that they were able to give even in the midst of their poverty. The church in Macedonia. He say out of their poverty, they no get, but they gave, and they gave abundantly. How do you bring abundance out of poverty? 
the Bible says, Paul said, it was because they gave themselves first to God and then to us. When a man has surrendered his heart to God, he doesn't call anything he has his own. God can wake you up tomorrow and say, that mess this bends. Take it to the church. Give it to your pastor. That extra bag of rice in your store. Take it to the church. Give the welfare. Let them share it for people who are in need. He said, but God, I kept it for Christmas. The, the Bible now says, do not be anxious of what you will eat, of what you will drink, and what you will put on. He says, life, not more than raiment. Don't think that with all this crying I'm crying, some people will be convicted. Oh. We will still have a mixed multitude. Some people have kept their heart somewhere. Apostle, when you come back to the message, we will continue. But let it be recorded in heaven that I said this. We have failed in giving. The church needs to rise up, especially because of the poverty index that is within this side of Nigeria. And then finally, God said, We have failed. Above all, this is the greatest. He said, We have failed. In exhibiting or exercising love for one another. Yes, I put it. Love for the brethren. That even amongst us believers in church, there is no love. That's why we side talk one another. That's why we gossip one another. Bad things are happening to a brother. Instead of you to pray for that family. We say talk. Who know what did they do for secret? Oh? The Bible says he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Brother, are you not sure you need to repent? But the Bible also says many are the afflictions of the righteous. How many? Many. I was watching Apostle John C. Suleiman, one of his videos recently, and he said when he had the assassination attempt on his life last year, that he spoke with a well-known figure in the Christian dome. And the person say, hmm, it's only God that knows what is happening. No, it's only God that will reveal it. Oh. Instead of sympathizing with a man who just lost seven people and was almost murdered. Think of it, if that man had died last year. How many true prophetic voices do we have in Africa? I hope you know Africa is in trouble now with the prophetic. I hope you know. <laughs> This is not um, to add credit. I'm not doing any support. No, no, no. But when you are commending people or churches in the body of Christ, it's good to voice them out. That is one of the only genuine prophetic voices alive in Africa. We don't care about one another any longer. When was the last time you took your phone on WhatsApp at least? And just communicate a message of hope and share to your contacts. It could be that somebody who was suicidal just needed that message to have hope restored. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, that we should not love in word and in tongue, but in deed and in truth. In deed and in truth. Indeed. They say, they usually say, I love you, no before mouth. Is that true? Even coming to church reflects our, first of all, it reflects our love for God. Believers are no longer willing to sacrifice. If rain falls on Sunday morning, no church. But the people that handed this gospel to us, they gave their life. Some of them were hung on poles and they set fire on them so that there will be street lights. Can you imagine? You call the brutal killing of Christians a sport. Some of them were fed to lions. Imagine a man with his entire family before lions. Some of them were sun asunder. Some of them were put into boiling oil. Some of them were literally tied to horses and chariots and dragged. They gave themselves for the gospel. Some stayed all their life without getting married like Apostle Paul. How did they cope with their urges? But they did that to preserve a heritage. But our generation, no sacrifice they live. We look for the slightest opportunity to exempt ourselves. So if we don't love God, how can we love one another? Look at the choices you make. 
every day as you consider your choices to God's will. The Bible says of Jesus in John chapter 4 that he was to go to Judea but he must needs go through Samaria. He didn't want to go through Samaria. Remember what the woman told him. He said Jews and Samaritans have no dealings. One time he passed through Samaria in the gospel according to Luke and they refused to allow him enter. His disciples said let's call down fire on these guys. Jesus said you don't know what spirit you are of. He knew he was going to be embarrassed. They could literally even stone him. But the Bible says he must needs go through Samaria. When was the last time you had to constrain and inconvenience yourself for the will of God? Even when it makes you look stupid. Some of us in heaven, forget about the accolades we give to ourselves. But in heaven, before God, the father of spirits, the one that sees the heart of men. And the Bible says that he's going to bring the work of every man to open view. Everything will be judged. Before God, what's the track record of how many times you have to suffer the relinquishing of certain things because of the kingdom you think in heaven will be rated according to our titles apostle prophets bishops no way the bible says in romans chapter 8 verse 17 if children then heirs joint heirs of god and joint heirs with christ he said if we suffer with him then and only then we will be glorified I'm not even talking about love for God. I'm talking about love for one another. But it is measured first by love for God. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? We are going to cry. I had to lie down on my face. I can't tell you how many hours I, I did that prayer. But believe me, my life is not, it's not amusing at all. It's not amazing at all. I had to cry for mercy. Finally, God has sent rain to us again. <laughs> Leave that story for another day. Are you ready to pray? Please rise on your feet. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. For you are good and your mercy is forever. says in 2nd Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 but if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn that's the word repent turn from their wicked ways no spirituality here I want us to go before God in just five minutes and cry for mercy I mean cry for mercy I want you to meditate and reflect on this point. It may not make sense to you, but you are not praying for yourself. You are praying on behalf of the church in this land. So that our lampstand will not be taken away. So that our relevance as touching the global agenda of God's kingdom will not be taken away. God is raising his army everywhere that he will not isolate us from the map. We can be in the map of Nigeria, but not be in the map of God's end time agenda can you raise your voice in five minutes and let's cry to the lord for mercy you can kneel down you can stand you can lie down you just make sure you're not sitting down lift your voice and let's cry to the king of kings in those days when the children of Israel were repenting before God, they did it with so much grief. 
crying to God of heaven that he will spare them and show them mercy. I want you to put all your emotions in this prayer. I say, Lord, truly we have heard the word and we need to repent. We need to readjust. We need to return to you. We need to amend our ways. He said, be serious for the Lord therefore and repent and do the works as of the best. Somebody make sure you are praying.
Have mercy. Have mercy, Father. Have mercy, Father. Sabarada da recapazi borrodo do borrodos. Thank you, Father. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord said, I've heard you, and I will show mercy. He said, but only if you will return back and do the works as of the first. And that you remain faithful to it. He said, and therefore, I will take away from you the evil that was meant to come upon your land. Now when it said that to me, my eyes were open in the spirit and I was taken to a place on the map. I saw written Gamboru. And I saw a group of people coming in from that place into Nigeria and I saw the attacks were going to begin from those axes. But God said, I will take away the evil that was to come upon you. You believe that? And God said, if you will return back to the place of intercession, if you will be bothered about the things that concerns my heart, He says, I will cause your sons and daughters that are at far to begin to prosper and to rise to notable places of influence that also includes those who are in diaspora thank you father lord we give you praise in jesus name Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Let's continue the service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is calling us to return back. I pray that tonight every prayer altar that has grown cold will be rekindled again. Some of us mothers that are here, God is calling you back to genuine intercessions for your sons and daughters. We need to get back. Some of us have made covenants with God that we have forgotten. I'm talking in the place of giving. We have forgotten. God is saying we need to return back there. And above all, we must build the culture of love amongst us. Accepting one another as a complement of each other. We must not all be the same. He created us different so we can complement one another. We must return back there. Because the forces of hell is truly rising in these last days against the body of Christ. And in spiritual warfare, in Ephesians 6, 18, verse 12, rather, Paul said, we wrestle against principalities, plural, powers, plural, rulers, plural, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, plural, the answer to unity is unity. You hear what I'm saying? If we can go back and adjust in these four places, 
beginning from your family and every local assembly there is a move of God that will break out in this place like has never been seen before there's something I saw while I laid down here that we pray God will not allow to happen I saw a new attack rising against the church and they went back to start repeating the process of burning churches now I'm praying it doesn't happen but those of you who have followed us for a while you know most times when the Lord speaks there will always be a sign I pray that it doesn't happen again the answer to that is that we return back to these instructions the name of God be praised in Jesus name are you ready for the word tonight we'll be out of here very shortly pray and say Lord speak to my heart give me a word some of you need a word of hope and of encouragement let the dew of heaven break forth upon you through the entrance of his word talk to him for one minute
Somebody's relationship with God will be rekindled again. This message may not be for everybody, but maybe because of the things that you have gone through recently, the devil has lied to you to make you feel God has forgotten you and you are alone. The message tonight is meant to restore your hope. In the words of the Master, He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You have to believe God. If you will believe no one, you have to believe God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Where you are in life does not really matter. What matters is who is with you. Because when the four Hebrew boys, the three Hebrew boys rather, were thrown into the furnace, it became comfortable for them not because they changed location but because of the one who was with them and so this week one of the days while I was praying I finished praying and I laid down on the bed and in a very brief vision I just saw written on the air knowing God as father and that's the message tonight knowing God as father I'd already prepared what to teach this Sunday and next Sunday but God had to interrupt it. Knowing God as Father. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 to 16. will be very brief tonight. Romans 8 15 to 16. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out. Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Knowing God as Father. We have received the spirit of adoption, not rejection. That means that every time you are feeling rejected at any point in life, you are beginning to operate or you are beginning to be influenced by a spirit that is not of God. God will never reject his own. God does not condemn. He convicts. So when you fall into a sin or you fall into a trespass, you have to be careful to understand the boundary between condemnation and conviction. He convicts us unto repentance. It is Satan that condemns us unto guilt. That feeling that makes you carry the weight of your sin is no longer of God. Your feelings, your emotions are now being manipulated by a spirit that is from hell. Why will God want you to carry the weight of your sin when Jesus took it and nailed it on the cross? The Bible says in Colossians 2 verse 14, Having blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was written against us, He took it and nailed it to the cross. When he said it is finished, it truly was finished. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says, For he made he who was without sin to become sin for us, that we should become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The righteousness of God in him, Christ Jesus. So you have to be careful. And we are not teaching this to bring licentiousness. We are not saying go and misbehave. This is actually the fundamentals for the teaching of holiness. That feeling of condemnation, I don't know why I'm, I'm here. I should go back to my teaching, but I feel like God is talking to somebody. You have to be careful. The Bible says if we confess our sins, He is faithful. My God, I feel the power of God strong. No, you don't have to look back now. You just listen to me. I'm just reporting to what I'm sensing. Alright? If you look, you will not see anything. Say Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. You don't see it with these eyes. You sense it by faith. Just allow the protocol to do their job. Behave as if they are not even standing. 
forget about them and focus on me this is your life your destiny is experiencing a surgery now it's an encounter so you forget about anybody around you even your car forget it we have security people they'll take care of the cars you have to be careful my god you have to be careful to differentiate between condemnation and conviction he say if we say we have no sin we make ourselves liars he say if we say we have no sin we make him a liar if we say we have not sin we make our, we ourselves liars and the truth is not in us he said but if we confess our sins first john 1 9 he is faithful and just to forgive us and in verse 7 he says if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and he says that the blood of jesus cleanses us from unrighteousness so when you are overtaken by a fault and you become aware of it and you turn to the lord in repentance instantly that work of sin and the effect against you has been terminated the next feeling of being condemned and feeling rejected away from god is no longer god's affair that one is now between you and another spirit and that is the reason why it takes the mentality of a son to truly approach god as father and to truly be set free from that feeling of condemnation and guilt knowing god as father in the old testament god was given several names these names were coined out of the encounters that god had with men god will look for a man in a generation and establish a covenant with that man and then on the strength of that covenant a dimension of god will be revealed to his generation so his generation or the people within his territory are at the mercy of the God that is revealed through his covenant. In as much as he didn't experience all of God, it was just a side of God he experienced. For instance, if God revealed himself to that man as a healer, he was called Jehovah Rapha. That is not all that God can do. That is just one amongst the many things that God can do. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he can do all things. But they called him, they knew him as Jehovah Rapha. Because that was all they saw about him. To another generation when he provided, he was called Jireh. The provider. But they didn't know him as the protector. They only knew him as a provider. That was why when Samson finished killing 1,000 soldiers... With a jawbone of an ass, he was still about to die of thirst. Because though God had given him victory over the enemies, he needed to know Jehovah in another light. So God had several names in the Old Testament. The revelation of God as Father was enshrouded. There are pockets of scriptures where you find God intending to reveal himself as Father to his people. For instance, Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 6, when Moses was making his discourse to the children of Israel in his final words. And Isaiah 63 verse 16. These are pockets of scriptures where God attempted to reveal himself as father. But never before the coming of Jesus did men relate with God as father. God was spirit of course, and men were but flesh. How can you call God your father? God revealed himself to the Hebrew people. And if you check the Hebrew word father, which is what we are going to explore tonight, you will realize that the meaning of the word father in Hebrew and the meaning of the word son in Hebrew are very powerful and sacred terms. A son literally means the very expression of something. So if you say, I am a son of God, it meant all that people needed to do to see and know who God was, was to look at you. And so because God was a spirit and they related with him from afar. Remember, the old covenant. They will be outside and the Shekinah was inside. And they didn't even know when it left that place. Because when Jesus died and the veil was torn into two, there was no Shekinah there. Yes or no? That means it wasn't there forever. 
it left, it departed. Many times it departed from them. But Jesus, when he came on the earth, he manifested and attempted to reveal God's nature as Father. This is a different thing entirely. That this God that we know who is so powerful. Remember how many times he revealed himself to them. For instance, in Mount Sinai, they saw the fire, they saw the smoke, thunders and lightning, cloud covering the entire mountain. The mountain was experiencing earthquake. Is that the God you want to relate with as Father? Is that the God that if he say, come and shake me, you will go and shake him? Or give him a handshake? No. In fact, they told Moses, they say, we don't want to hear him again. You just go and hear him. Let's be here. If not, we will die. But saying that God is Father meant a different thing entirely. It was a new experience. That this God that was so powerful and majestic and mighty had a tender side of him that we could relate with. That even though he appeared like a God that can consume as the consuming fire, he was yet the God of love. It was Jesus who brought about that manifestation. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 14 that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld him, even the glory of the only begotten son of the father. The first time God was ever expressed in flesh, how does God look? It was when Jesus came on the earth. And you know what? God used the most frail of bodies. I know you see all the films that they show, Jesus film and all of these religious film and all of the artwork. But let me tell you the truth. Jesus was not always looking good. Though, because Isaiah gave us a, a perfect picture of how Jesus looked in Isaiah 53 verse 2. He said, he shall grow as a root out of dry ground. Have you planted in dry season before? A tender plant. You will notice that the plant is becoming yellow. It's almost dying. You traveled for one week, you didn't water your vegetables. When you came back, the leaves were already falling. That the Bible says that was how he was. God never used most of the people who God used, it was not really about stature. That was why they were looking for the strength of Samson. He was not a bodybuilder. I put it to you. If not, they would have known where his strength was. That they had to bribe a harlot. And she used their bribe to enter witchcraft to find out the source of his strength. Why? He shall grow as root out of dry ground. If Samson was not really a bodybuilder as you think. All those things you see in films is just an adumbration to help our understanding. Did your Bible not say that he uses the weak things? How can you say this one is the full expression of God? How can you say that this one, we know where he was born. His parents had to run away with him so that Herod would not kill him. And you say this is God, this is God. One time in John chapter 10 verse 30, Jesus said, I and my father are one. They picked up stones to stone him. He said, we've had enough. Because in Jewish culture, there was, there was no difference between a father and a son. The son was the full expression of the father. So much so that the son will carry the father's name. You are Simon Bar-Jonah. You know what Bar-Jonah means? Bar is the Hebrew word for son. Son of Jonas. That's what it means. But when Jesus brought that revelation, he changed the experience and the template. And this message is an attempt to bring us back to that place of relationship with him. Because this is the basis of your Christian experience. Everything that you do as a believer or that you become is hinged upon the foundation of a relationship with him. The Hebrew word for father is the word Abba. The Greek rendition of it is the word Peter, P-A-T-E-R. Both of them mean the same thing. As a matter of fact, it has four major meanings that we are going to go into. Number one, it means source. It means source. So when you see that he says, Abba Father, it's still Father, Father, that's it. And remember, when Jesus was on the cross, how many times did he call the Father? Twice. My Father, my Father. So don't criticize people who pray and say, My Father, my Father. Don't criticize them. They could probably be praying from a revelation. 
Number one, it means source. Source there means the originator and the initiator of something. It means the pathfinder. The one through which all things consist. The originator. The one who started it. The one who births it. That's the meaning of the word source. In several renditions in scripture, God is called, for example, God is called the father of glory. In Ephesians 1.17, he said that we do not cease to make mention of you in our prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory. The word father there means source. So the source of glory. Glory is all that God has and is. Glory is the full weight and expression of a thing. It's not just beauty, it's beyond that. God is called the father of glory. And the Bible says our experience as believers is from glory to glory. That means that your experience from one dimension of glory to another is coming from God. And I've said it before, that Christianity by and large is a journey into the belly of God, into the depths of God. Because he is the father of glory. He's also called the father of mercy in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3. The source of mercy. That's why the Bible says in Matthew 5, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain what? Mercy. Because he is the source of mercy. So if you see a man having the ability to show mercy and kindness, that man, one way or the other, has a relationship with Abba. The source of all mercy. That God can look at 100 sins that you committed and pardon you. You know mercy is the bias system of God. It's not favor, it's mercy. If you put mercy and favor on the same table, I will take mercy and leave favor. If you put it for me to choose. Because mercy is like, if you are praying for mercy, it's like a universal prayer point. Everything is captured in mercy. You can pray mercy for promotion. You can pray mercy for deliverance. You can pray mercy to know more of God. Moses was on the mountain 40 days, 40 nights, no food. Twice. Can you do that one? No. But when God shows you mercy, you can be eating yam on your table. And it takes you into an experience for five minutes. And you come back with that experience and change your world. He showed you mercy there. And that's why if you are pursuing God, if you are going on an adventure with God, don't think it's your prayer and your fasting that does it. No. It conditions you. It's you that it changes. It doesn't affect God. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? It doesn't. Because occultic people fast. And boy, they are fasting. We can't try it. I was told the story of a man who wanted to see the devil. He joined the occult. And he was desperate to rise. And they told him, if you want to see the devil, because that's like the highest point. You know, the deception in the kingdom of darkness is so much that some witches may never see the devil till they die and go to hell. Say amen to that. So don't put your hand there. I'm telling you the gospel truth. Where was I now? So they said he was going to see the devil. He had to fast for 11 months. 6 to 6. And he must not sleep in the afternoon. After about five months, he mistakenly slept one afternoon. Then they came to him and said, you have failed. Go and start again. 11 plus 5, 16. After the 11 months, Satan appeared to him and said, what do you want? Can you do that one? But he showed you mercy. Ephesians chapter 2. But God was rich in his mercy towards us. That though you were dead in trespasses... He raised you up and sat you with Christ in heavenly places. What did you do? You still don't even want to come to church. But it doesn't take away that you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Because they delay your salary, you refuse to pay tight. It doesn't take away your authority. He still left you there. Let's leave that. Maybe one day we'll come and talk about mercy. The source... Abba, the source of all life, the source of all existence, 
the one who began the beginning. In the beginning, God. That's how your Bible puts it, isn't it? Even the beginning was in God. It was God that made the beginning to manifest. That's why the end of your Bible is not an end. It's a beginning. At the end of Revelation, he said, I, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. <laughs> That's why he's called Alpha Omega, not Alpha and Omega. The beginning end is a perpetual continue. You can't say he, he is the beginning and the end. There's no break. It's a deliberate existence. He was existing on his own. It was out of his love he decided that I will create a place called earth and put a man there who is lower than the angels and give him authority over that place such that if I need to do anything there, the man needs to permit me to come. The source. Oh, that's the truth. The source. Number two, the meaning of the word Abba, sustainer. I've told you before that the source of a thing determines the sustenance of that thing. <laughs> you know, it's not everybody that begins something and sustains it. Is that true? When a young man gets a lady pregnant and denies the pregnancy and goes, is he the sustainer of that child? No. Only for him to wake up in the future when the child has become great and come and claim that. Hi. I wanted to say something now, but let me just, let me leave that now. That is why you see, fatherhood is beyond being a man. I hope you know. Because if you find all these qualities in anything or any creature, it has best adumbrated God's personality as father. So you can be a woman and yet God can use you. To, uh, God can outsource from your secret place a revival within a nation. John Wesley and Charles Wesley, great revivals of history. It was the prayers of their mother that birthed those men and what they manifested. The sustainer. As sustainer, he's the one that gives longevity for process. He's the one that gives longevity. He doesn't just begin it, he continues it, he sustains it, he gives it longevity. In fact, his name is El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. That's the meaning. It has two meanings, the almighty God and the multi-breasted one. It's like a dog with breasts all around and the milk is coming out from every nipple. And one puppy is trying to suck. The puppy becomes confused. Where do I suck from? Because milk is coming out of everywhere. That is the very illustration for the multi-breasted one. So that's why when you cry to God and you are depressed because of your lack, God does not seem to respond by crying back to you. He gives you an instruction. Because your entire lack in your lifetime as a human being cannot withstand the almighty sustenance of God. That's why he could speak to Abraham. He said, come out of your father's house, your nation, your kindred. He said, and I will take you to a land I will show you. And in that land, I will bless you and make you great. It was not about where you are coming from. Why will you tell him to leave his father? What of the inheritance he has been working for and receiving? God said, leave that. If you receive that one, your father will take glory in, you, in himself. He said, come to a land I will show you. Abraham got to the land and it was a dry land. The person who even chose a big land and a better land was Lot. The Bible says in Genesis 13 that he saw the vegetation of the place that was towards Sodom. He chose that place. It was a desert that God gave Abraham. But you know, God actually didn't give Abraham that land. That land was not the land of inheritance. That land was the land of positioning. Because in Genesis chapter 13, in the second to last verse, he told Abraham, he said, from where you are, lift up your eyes. That's a message for another time. Maybe at the end of this year. From where you are, lift up your eyes. That is why Israel, in as much as it is in a desert region, they are one of the highest exporters of agricultural products. We that have arable land, what are we exporting? It was not a land of inheritance. It was a land of positioning. 
He kept him there so his eyes can see the ends of the earth. Because he told him, he said, look northward, southward, eastward, westward. He said, walk through the length and breadth of that land. He said, for I've given you. Did the Bible not say that where the stole of a foot step on? God has given you for possession. It was not a land of inheritance. It was a land for positioning. So who told you that Medugri is your land of inheritance? This is where he's positioning you to see the nations. From here. From here. Sustainer. Psalms 104 verse 27 to 28. Are you getting blessed? He said, these all wait for you. All of creation, they wait for you. That you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open your hand and they are filled with good. The sustainer of all. The one who sustains all and is sustained by none. El Shaddai. If you know God as the sustainer, you will not be afraid of what man says to you. When an uncle disappoints you, you will not be afraid. God just excused him the honor of being part and parcel of your lifting. David said, I'll look up to the hills from whence comes my help. Not the hills. He said, my help cometh from the Lord. Not the hills. The hills was Mount Zion, where the temple was in Jerusalem. It was a place of position. It was from there I will look up. My help cometh from the Lord. Sustainer. Number three, it means provider. Provider. Jehovah Jireh. The God who provides. Even in a, in a, on a mountain where there was no animal, he stopped Abraham from killing his child. And he said, turn. And Abraham saw a ram that was caught there. That ram was not there before they got to the mountain. He only proved to him that I'm the God, your provider. He can bring water out of stones. He can make rain become food for mankind. For 40 years, they didn't understand it. They called it manna. No science could explain it. He can do and undo. He can use any situation to provide for you. He can make it is when you are in a place stranded, no network. And then he can send help in a way that will dazzle you. That's the God, the provider. When he calls himself father, it means provider. That's why, you see, <laughs> that's why as a father, when you see the devil attacking your finance as a man, what the devil is attacking is your ability to project God as the provider, Abba, to your family. And that, that's, that's exactly what he's trying to do. Because God said, Jesus said, if you who are evil men know how to give good gifts, even in your fallen state, your evil state, you can still know what it means to provide for your children. He said, will, they, will a child ask his father for bread and he gives him stone? Will he ask him for fish and he gives him a serpent? Will he ask him for egg and he gives him a scorpion? If you who are evil men know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father not give you good things? James 1, 17, he said, every good and perfect gift cometh down from the father, the source, Abba, the provider. Before God sent you on earth, every provision needed for you, for you to fulfill destiny had been made. That's why Paul says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Glory existed before time. So some of us cry over spilled milk. Some helpers are not supposed to be in your life forever. They are supposed to be there for a season. And now that season is over where God wants you to transit to greater possibility. And the helpers leave and you are crying after them. Why pursue Egypt when the promised land is ahead? Men are just channels. They are just bodies. They can change. It's the provider you should hold on to. When, when we started this work, I cried to God and I pleaded with him. I said, please, don't allow me to beg for myself. Don't allow me to borrow for myself. And God came to me and told me, he said, in this dry land, I will prosper you. And show you that when I call a man, I'm able to fund that calling. 
I can ask you to give for church project, ask you to give for this one, give for that one. But for myself, never till Jesus come will I ever send a text message and say, give me for me. Never. There's nobody here that can raise their hand and say at any time, I said, give me for me. Never. My God shall supply. Doesn't mean I don't appreciate, but I have known him as provider. Because he has met me in the least circumstance. One time years ago when I was still a student, I was traveling on the road. I was going to Joss. No money. If I get to Joss, I will have to trek to where I'm going to. You go on that kind of journey like that. I entered the car and I was quiet, praying in tongues. When we got to carry and we came down, two ladies came down and went to buy food for me. I told them I'm fasting. They said, break it. When you break with this. And then they contributed 2,000 naira and gave me. They never knew me from Adam provider provider jare you are enough jare you are enough i will be content in every circumstance jare you are enough i'm telling you Sometimes your patience will be tested. Just keep waiting. He will show up. Keep waiting there. You know what? The, the Bible calls him the father of spirits. He can appear to somebody in the night and say, From today, give this man one million every month till he's dead. Who are you? I don't know. But God said this. Alaba Shanda Bakaya Rabakusi. I've seen things though, let me tell you, let me tell you the truth. I've seen things with, with all due respect and with all humility. The reason why we are not driving Benz and Maybach now is because we choose not to. God first. If not, with what I have seen, I should have something. I've seen things. I've seen God move people from different places. I've seen God latch people to my life who don't even know SGNI exists. In another place, people who have never seen my face. How do you think we'll survive in this land? You don't know. Don't you know that in the north they don't give? Uh, is it me that will tell you? You don't know they don't give. Ay, ay, ay. Take your mind off man. Oh. Take your mind. And it didn't start today. Right from when I was an instrumentalist, I refused them to pay me. Because man can pay you, but when God rewards you, Some people fought. Aluta continua. Victoria is kata. Say you must pay them. You must pay them. I say no. Allow God to reward me. Today this is the reward. From a drummer to an apostle. That's part of the reward. Provider. Let me pray for you. Anyone that is going through any form of lack right now. That the God that I serve, that you also serve. The God that has blessed me and has blessed us to this point in a dry land. May that God show up for you before the end of this month. May he show up in a mysterious way for you this month. May that God raise strangers to help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strangers. The Bible says, strangers shall stand and feed your flock. Strangers. People who don't know you, but they just, they stand and do everything possible that you are helped to where you should be. Strangers. Strangers. So you travel and come back a trip of one week and realize you didn't spend anything. You didn't call anybody. But as you enter that place, God began to bring them together. Resources and people everywhere. Strangers. Please be seated. I'm almost done. It's a reality. Oh. Don't be deceived. I'm telling you, this is real. If God shows you, you will know it's not about your NGO job. It's not about your lecturing job. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by a word. Every word that proceeded from God. And then finally, he is protector. He's protector. He's not just your source, 
your sustainer and your provider. He protects you. He defends you. I will The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. That means you are immune season after season. Unusual immunity around your life. People just look at you from afar and see you frail until they try you. Until they try you. Please. Until the witch in your house try me. Tell them we are up for trials. <laughs> Saraba taburukosia Nembarashka barata manza He said be not afraid For they that are with you Are more than they that are against you Ye have got little children And has overcome the world For greater Somebody say greater Is he that is with bakaya. <laughs> you have to know this side of God To do ministry in this battle It's not it, I didn't hear I didn't copy somebody I didn't see all that. This is not youthful exuberance. I know the God I serve. Recently I traveled, was in a plane, landed. Only for three days later I saw that that plane was under investigation. They say it carried contaminated fuel. And technicians said that because of that fuel, it could either explode in the air or just fall like a stone. The same aircraft I, I traveled in. You heard the news, bar? I was on that aircraft. Boy, you can't crash. Not because I'm an apostle. No, this is not about... The office of an apostle has his own. And this is me, a son of God, my father. I know something. I know something. Not by road accident, not by air, not by land. You now see that defense in this life is not really by what you have. Oh. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. It's by what you know. We remember the name of the Lord. There are many rich people who don't have the defense, half the defense that you have. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5. What did he say? He said, I will be to them a world of fire and the glory in their midst. I will be to them a world of fire. <laughs> Tell the demon to enter. I will be to them a wall of fire. The God that answers your enemies with thunder. Psalms 81 verse 7. He said, you called on me and I answered you from the secret place of thunder. That's how he answers them. When they call your name on that mirror, when they invoke your family name, it's thunder that comes. The Bible, and that's why you have, you, have, you have dodged many arrows. The enemy is more surprised and frustrated than you. That you are still alive. Why? Because Abba is your protector. You say, Apostle, but I don't have anything. It's not about what you have physically. He has a mandate on your life. There is something, there is a purpose on your life. And until you fulfill it, no demon from hell can touch you. Jesus said, Because I live, ye shall live also. Ha! Because he lives. I can face you know what I'm done with the message that, that I, I, I have some I have not spoken but we have to finish here oh fear is gone oh fear is gone say because I know he owns my my life is worth the living time Because it lives, because it lives, I can face tomorrow. Shabaraba kusoma, my God, my God, I feel the presence of God here tonight. Oh, there is God. Because 
Brothers and sisters, this is all that God is to you as Father. He is your source. He is your sustainer. In that affliction, He is your sustainer. That's why you didn't die. They say people with sickle cell don't pass 22. You are 30 years now. Why didn't you die? He sustained you through the fire. He's your provider. And above all, he's your protector. Four reasons why you must know God as Father. Number one, for to build an effective relationship with God. Don't worry, get the message. No need to write, get the message. You know, the devil can do ev almost everything but one thing. He cannot pray. That's why he is mad when you pray. Because he cannot dare to call God our Father. Jesus said, when you pray, say what? That's why he's mad when you pray. He's doing everything to frustrate your prayer life. They didn't pay you. It's not about your pay. Your pay. It's about your prayer life. All these problems around, you are carrying a cause. This person is delaying. You went for an interview. They didn't give you the job. This and that. All this. They are part. It's your relationship with God. Because he's crazy. When he sees you call God my father. We have this spirit in us by which we cry. Abba. Abba. God doesn't give him the attention he gives us. So he's mad about it. When you know this, this night you will go back and decide. Like the psalmist, he say, I will bless the Lord at all times. Hmm? Number one, you need to build a, an effective relationship with God when you know him as your father. Number two, for growth and edification. Because he's your father, he's your sustainer. He sustains you all through. I'll give you the remaining two next Sunday. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. Lift your hands and bless Him. Magnify His name. The Bible says, Be Behold what manner of love the Father has given to us that we should be called sons of God. You say, but Apostle, I'm broke. Yes, you are broke, but you are still a son. You say, Apostle, I carry three courses. I may repeat, you are still a son. Sir Apostle, I went for the interview and this is the third interview this year. No job. You are still a son. You still have the right to call him your father. And if you who are evil men know how to give good things to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father? He has called you to a divine purpose. He has predestined that you will be called unto glory. Give him praise and give him glory tonight. My life is worth the living just because he lives. Because I know he owns my future. Yes, he does. My life is worth. If it's your father, he's saying to you, ask what you will, and I will do it for you. In John 16, 24, he says, before now you have not asked. He say, ask and receive. I want to give you two minutes. I want you to cry to heaven, to your father. That request in your life, that burden in your heart, that desire that seems to tarry long, that expectation that seems to wait too long. I want you in two minutes open your mouth and cry to Abba. Talk to your source in two minutes. Cry unto him like a child. The Bible says by the spirit of adoption we cry Abba. Father. Cry to him and say Lord it is time. It is time for you to be married and settled. It is time for that miracle job. It is time for a promotion. It is time for new dimensions in the spirit. It is time for greater experiences in the glory. 
It is time for that attack of witchcraft, that cycle of limitation to come to an end. I can hear you pray. Come on, come on. Come on, cry to him. He says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall not. You shall find. And the door shall be open. Let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Let my whole life be expressions of your grace. We cry, Abba Father, we cry, Abba Father. Come on, cry to Him. Enough is enough. It is time for that prayer that you come to an end. It is time for that vision to be over. Cry unto our Father. We cry your source, your sustainer, your provider, your protector, your defender, by day and night, he that keepeth Israel, neither sleeps nor slumber. Who told you he has given up on you? Who told you he has forgotten you? This is your set time for a miracle. This is your set time for favor. This is your set time for a victory. Hallelujah. From today, go back and relate to him as father. He did not forget you. He did not forsake you. Don't believe the lies that the devil whispered to you. Were there not good days before now? Were there not days where you enjoyed his goodness? Who told you that he will leave you in this affliction? This affliction was meant to try you. Because every son is chastised. To the end that a glory will be revealed through your own life. He said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that is to be revealed. Friends, I bring you a word from God. Your father, that there is a glory ahead of you. And the word is that the season for that glory has come in your life. Some of you has just some of you have just successfully 
completed a season of trial and heaven has marked you and the days ahead are the days where God will lift you he will lift you before the same people who mocked you he says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies of my mockers of my humiliators so that the same people who said nothing good will come out of her with their eyes they will see and behold the praise of God coming out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ your season has come the Lord said I should tell somebody your season of announcement praise and celebration has come Yes, that's a word for one person. Your season of announcement, praise, and celebration has come. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our lips with joy. Then even the heat is set among them. The Lord has done great things for them. I prophesy a season of great things for you. A season of great things. A season of great things. Greater exploits. Greater glory greater possibilities and I declare that season comes now in the name of Jesus come on shout a bigger amen clap your hands and give him the praise and the glory I declare over your life we have eight days to the end of July. July is the seven months. And on the seventh day, God rested. Your life now doesn't look like anything will happen. But may my God, who is your God, the one who calls himself Abba, bring you into true and lasting rest. I mean rest on every side. Rest on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is a prophecy and I place the anointing upon this word. Between now and the Emara Shaman Tabakai. Between now and 31st July. May God bring you into rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. All the people that you called and they didn't respond to your call. From tomorrow, may they start calling and looking for you. The Bible says, God turned the latter end of Job. He restored the latter end. How? He said, all his brethren, they came together and each gave him a piece of gold and silver. Everyone that neglected you who was supposed to help you in your season of trials. May God rally them around to help you with an apology. Did you hear what I said? That means they will do it, they will do it times two because restoration must at least be double. And they will do it apologizing to you. We are sorry we didn't pick your call. We are sorry we didn't get back to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. You know what? I saw two jobs, two miracle jobs. I just, I just saw two jobs. Mega jobs coming. You will bring the testimony back to the glory of God the Father. In Jesus mighty name we're praying those of you who were sick do you realize you are healed already yes check your bodies you are healed depression is lifted off your minds for some of you your joy has been restored for some of you the fire of your secret place has been rekindled and that fire will never go out while you are spending time in the presence of God God will place your needs in the heart of others God will place your needs in the heart of others. In the name of Jesus Christ. Get ready for good news. Get ready for good news. Hallelujah. Amen. While you're all standing, let's give an opportunity just in case someone is here and needs to give his or her heart to the Lord. You want to be born again or you want to rededicate your life afresh Why we are all standing let's give him a, a minute of opportunity for such sometimes when you lose consciousness of god as your father you can stray away and be caught in the trap of sin or you can stray away to a point where spiritually you become cold 
If you are like that and you are here, you want to be rededicated back to the Lord, I want you to walk forward quickly. Or you want to surrender your life to Jesus, your heart to the Lord, I want you to walk forward quickly so we can pray with you. Let's just give an opportunity, a minute, if there is any amongst us, and then we can pray for them. If there is none, we will proceed. But if there is, let's give them an opportunity. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Return back to your father. The prodigal son said, I will arise and go back to my father. I will arise and go back. God is calling you to return again. Why struggle with swines when your father's heart has enough bread to spare? Keep clapping, I'm telling you. Rejoice for souls this evening. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards them. If you are coming out, come out very quickly. Stretch your hands and pray for them. Those of you in front, put your right hand on your chest. Whether it's your first time or you are surrendering afresh, say these words after me a minute from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sin. I believe that you died and rose again, that I will be saved. And today I return to you. I believe you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Keep your right hand on your chest. Father, we declare by the authority of your word that their sins are forgiven. We declare that they are born again by the Spirit of God. We ask that you seal them with the seal of your Spirit, which is the seal of promise. We rebuke the power of Satan over their life. We rebuke the power of sin. We rebuke the power of darkness over their lives. We bring them into a place of light. We bring them out of captivity into freedom and the liberty of sons. In the name of Jesus Christ, we terminate every oppression around their life and we release them into your peace. They will serve you all the days of their lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and Amen.